Good morning. It is a beautiful day in the neighborhood. A couple of things before we get started this morning. Remind you of uh, Vicar Katz's class after worship today. Are you meeting in the... Where'd she go? <laughs> she left me. <laughs> Are you meeting in the fellowship hall? Yes. After, after, serv- after the service and fellowship hall, starting at 11. Thank you to all the folks who came out to help with the cleanup yesterday and the other things that occurred. That was uh, well done. I understand we have another 30-yard roll-off that's slam full. It is full, so that's good. Mike wants to do it again next week? <laughs> Between him and Mike Samples, I don't know. You know, those guys, man, they work me to death. <clears throat> Anything else besides like Vicar? I know you got some. You got your pink hat on. I do. I have my pink hat on. Is this thing working? I hope so. Okay, so if you weren't here a couple of weeks ago, um, I asked you to put your deep, dark theological questions on that piece of paper that I just gave you, and then we're going to put it in this pink Dolly Parton hat. And there's a method to my madness, and you're going to find out all about it in the little class that I'm teaching you after, not after practice, after After church, after practice, practice. after practice. Um, And do we all know what this Friday is? First Friday game night. Okay. All so, I know is Saturday is May the Fourth be with you. Yes, I mean, it's a it's a it's a whole weekend of exciting times. We have First Friday game night. We have Star Wars Day on May fourth. May the fourth be with you. And then May fifth is Cinco de Mayo if if you celebrate. So join us with the festivities starting on Friday, six thirty to eight thirty. I'll be quiet. (laughs) Yes, next week is Guatemala Sunday. Indeed. Anything else this morning? Travis. Well... That is a that is a Schrodinger question, you know. I recommend filtered water. Travis? Uh, due to a miscommunication between the sponsor and the and habitat, the build that is ongoing right now has been put on hold. They have essentially lost their sponsor for the remainder of this build. So that has delayed that build. Uh, I say that for a couple of reasons. And Lucy, if you've got an update on that, that'd be great. The next um, build day will be May 17th. Okay, so and they did they push it back like that. Okay. Um, so there were two points for me mentioning that. One was the delay in the build. Excellent. Thank you, Travis. Anything else this morning? Going once. If not, let us rise as we begin this morning. Face the font as we give thanks for our baptism. We gather this day in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Immersed in the promises of baptism, let us give thanks for what God has done for us. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your voice thundered over the deep and water became the essence of life. Adam and Eve beheld Eden's verdant rivers. The ark carried your creation through the flood into a new day. Miriam led the dancing as your people passed through the sea into freedom's land. 
In a desert pool, the Ethiopian official entered your boundless baptismal life. At the river, your beloved son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you opened the floodgates of your reconciling love, freeing us to live as Easter people. Bless this water as we rejoice with glad hearts, giving all honor and praise to you through Jesus Christ, our source of living water in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. We continue with there in God's garden. <coughs> of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Lord Jesus, you raise the dead to life in the Spirit. Lord, have mercy. You bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. You bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you give us your Son as the vine apart from whom we cannot live. Nourish our life in this resurrection, that we may bear the fruit of love and know the fullness of your joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. Is this working? Yeah. No? It's on. Yeah. The first reading is from the eighth chapter of Acts. Led by the Spirit, Philip encounters an Ethiopian official who is returning to his African home after having been to Jerusalem to worship. Philip uses their encounter to proclaim the gospel to him. Upon coming to faith in Jesus, he is baptized by Philip. An angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go toward the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, do you understand what you are reading? He replied, how can I unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb silent before its shearer, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, about whom, may I ask you, does the prophet say this, about himself or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak, and starting with this scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is, some, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azotus, and as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. The word of the Lord. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. Please read along with me from Psalm 22. From you comes my praise in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the sight of those who fear the Lord. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Let those who seek the Lord give praise. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. All the families of nations shall bow before God. For dominion belongs to the Lord, who rules over the nations. Indeed, all who sleep in the earth shall bow down in worship. All who go down to the dust, though they be dead, shall kneel before the Lord. Their descendants shall serve the Lord, whom they shall proclaim to the generations to come. They shall proclaim God's deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying to them, The Lord has acted. The second reading is from the fourth chapter of 1 John. We love God and others because God first loved us. We cannot say we love God whom we have not seen while hating fellow Christians whom we regularly see. Love toward God is to be matched by love toward others because the essence of God is love. Beloved, let us love one another because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. And this is love, not that we loved God, 
but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us, because he has given up of us given us of his spirit and we have seen and do testify that the father has sent his son as the savior of the world god abides in those who confess that jesus is the son of god and they abide in god so we have known and believe the love that god has for us god is love and those who abide in love abide in god and god abides in them love has been perfected among us in this that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, for fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers or sisters are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen, cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this, those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. The word of the Lord. There we go. So as you've noticed, we, the vicar and I have been staying in the book of Acts during the Easter, and I'm going to stay there again today with this eighth chapter. It's a wonderful story of Philip, one of the, um, the disciples who doesn't get a lot of airtime in the Gospels. Um, but Philip apparently was a, quite, a, quite the evangelist. If we back up from where our, our lesson started today and back up to the beginning of the 8th chapter, what we see is that Philip has been in Samaria and has been very successful in his time there in proclaiming the good news and bringing people into the fold. Now what's interesting, I think, is that Philip is in Samaria. As you all know, the Jewish world doesn't like the Samaritans. The Samaritans are unclean. The Samaritans are are mongrels, they're dogs, they're people who you don't associate with if you're a Jewish person. And yet here Philip is in the midst of them, proclaiming the good news, baptizing them, healing them, and even casting out demons, I suspect. That first generation of disciples had the same powers that Jesus did, as we saw last week from Peter and John entering the temple. So Peter, you know, Philip has just been, he's just having a ball. He's up there, he's up there in Samaria, Samaria um, doing what he's been called to do. He is doing something that is rather radical. 
You know, he's preaching to the Samaritans. This, this movement that has begun, that's called the way in the book of Acts, this, this group of people who believe Jesus to be the Messiah of God, this group of people who believe that Jesus died on the cross and was raised from the dead, they are an inclusive group. Inclusive. I mean, if Samaritans are okay to preach to, then who's not okay to preach to? God sends an angel and tells Philip, I need you to go down to the road between Jerusalem and Gaza. Now, we all know where Gaza is right now, right? It's on the west, the west coast of Israel because of what's going on in the news. And it's a rather dry area down there. There's not a whole lot of water. It's not, it's not quite into the Negev Desert, but it's pretty dry down there. God sends them down there to speak to someone who is on their way back home. And it turns out that this person is a eunuch, the treasurer of the Candace of Ethiopia. Now, <clears throat> the NRSV kind of glosses over what's something that's very important here. It just says, and you heard it read, <clears throat> a eunuch of Ethiopia. There was a eunuch in, of Ethiopia. <clears throat> well, that's not what the Greek says. The Greek says, and this is important, folks, there was a man, a man, a eunuch of Ethiopia. All right? Let me explain to you why that's important. Because a eunuch is no man. In the Jewish world, a eunuch was no person. In the Jewish world, a eunuch was a person who had been emasculated and therefore was not acceptable and unclean in society. Now, I don't know if that's the case in the Greek world, but I do know that in the Jewish world, that's somebody who just is not a part of society, not accepted, is, is rejected completely out of hand simply because of what this person is. Not who, but what this person is. This person has no place in society. This person is not going to be able to father children. This person is not going to have a family. This person is turned into what he is for a specific purpose in life. And in this case, he is the treasurer of Ethiopia. And because his life is so limited and so narrow, he's able to do this job and be trusted by the Candace, the queen. But he's not somebody who you would normally go to in, in, in Israel. He's not somebody that that the average Jewish person would ever consider even speaking to in Israel. And yet, God sends Philip to this man, to this eunuch, who has already been to, his, to Jerusalem and has worshipped in the outer courts of the temple because he wouldn't be admitted past that. And he's got a scroll, so he must have been a man of means. Because to have a scroll, what, uh, scrolls were not common. They were something that had to be, that had to be um, copied by hand by a scribe. And it's an extremely meticulous and slow process because in the Jewish world, copying the, the, the scriptures was a holy thing. And they had to be right. There could be no mistakes, otherwise the manuscript was no good. So he paid a pretty penny for this scroll of Isaiah that he's reading, and from which he's reading about the suffering servant in Isaiah. Of course, Philip jumps up, you know, as he's there and he's waiting on him, and starts and asks him, do you know what you're reading? Of course he doesn't. And this is a problem with the scriptures, folks. You and I know what they say. You and I understand what they mean. You and I can have, because of our years of, of studying the scriptures and hearing sermons and, and going to Sunday school, we understand when we re read something in the Bible what it's, uh, who it's about and what it's about. But this Ethiopian had no idea. And Philip explains to him, our understanding, and let's be clear about that, our understanding of this suffering servant in Isaiah, and he equates the suffering servant with Jesus, who has died on the cross for all of cre creation, who has given up his life so that that creation might be reconciled to God, 
and has taken up his life again in resurrection so that he might give that eternal life to us through baptism. Wow. <laughs> I don't think that's, that's ever happened to me. I don't think I've ever come across somebody like this eunuch and had the opportunity to open the scriptures to them. And Philip, must, that must have been an exciting moment for Philip. Can you imagine what it would have been like? And then to baptize the man. He says, look, here's water. Now, <laughs> like I said, they're in kind of an arid part of the world there, and yet here's water all of a sudden. That's one of those wonderful miracles of the scriptures. What's to prevent me from being baptized? That is an interesting question, is it not? What is to prevent me from being baptized? There are churches, folks, who will not baptize some people simply because of who or what they are. Today, I have experienced it. We have baptized a person who would not be baptized by another church simply because that person was gay. This message is for everybody. Jesus sent us, and according to the Gospel of Matthew in the 28th chapter, to all people. This message that is being proclaimed in Acts is an inclusive message for all of creation, not for just a portion or particular people who happen to fit whatever mold us humans like to create. It is for all people, regardless of their social status, regardless of whether they're rich or poor, regardless of the color of their skin, regardless of their sexuality. I'll, you, you add whatever you, else you want to onto that list, but the list can go on and on and on. The bottom line is each and every one of us were created by God, and therefore we are loved by God, and we are worthy of hearing the good news that God loves us and wants us in God's life. And so this Ethiopian eunuch, this man, was baptized into the communion of saints, into the community of believers. And I believe that the reason that God sent Philip to this eunuch was because this eunuch's going back to Ethiopia and he's going to open the eyes of all those folks over there. He's going to spread the good news to all of those people. And he, look who he is. It's going to come from somebody who is not in the societal world. If God can use a eunuch, folks, if God can use me, God can use you. It's just that simple. I, I'm, I wasn't quite like Philip. You know, Philip just picked up and ran down to the, to the road between Jerusalem and Gaza. I fought it for two and a half years when I first felt the call to ministry. I, you got to be kidding me, God. I'm an engineer. I'm a, I know how to cuss with the best of them. And by the way, I haven't lost my engineer and speak yet, folks. I'm sorry. <laughs> but if God can use me, if God can use Philip, can use this eunuch, God can use anybody sitting here today to go out there into the world and speak the good news of God's love for God's creation, for God's people, to anyone with whom we come into contact. That's a big order. It's a great honor. It's a great responsibility that is laid upon us and given to us as God's children. But God doesn't leave us without the ability to do that. God gives us God's spirit. He infuses us with that spirit in our baptism, the spirit of the risen Christ. And he feeds us today again as our Lord Jesus enfolds us in his arms in this meal that we're about to partake of and fills us back up with his presence so we can go back out there in the world and give him away for the next 166 hours. Is that right? Yeah, 166 hours. I figure you're here for about two hours a week. So folks, come on up. Get filled back up. Feel God's love as Jesus hands himself to you again today. And then go out there and find your eunuch to speak to.
God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. We pray for the church around the world, for all ministers, and for the mission of the gospel. Keep all the newly baptized and confirmed in your care. Cleanse our hearts with your word and help us to abide in your ways. God of grace, for the well-being of the earth and all created things, for rivers and lakes, streams and estuaries, melting glaciers and polluted waters, help us to protect the earth and all that is in it. God of grace, for the nations and for all in authority, for local, state, and national leaders, for elected representatives at every level, and for international organizations, that justice and peace may reign. God of grace, for all those in need, for any experiencing homelessness or unemployment, for those fleeing from oppression or seeking asylum, and for all who are ill or suffering. God of grace, for this congregation, for the caring ministries of this faith community, for all who visit and minister to one another, for all who take communion to homes or care centers, and for all who seek to share your love within the world. God of grace, for the people of Ukraine as they continue to suffer in the war they fight for their freedom, inspire all leaders of the world to bring an end to this conflict. God of grace, we pray for all the innocents who have lost their lives in Israel and Gaza. Protect all who are threatened by the war there. Inspire the leaders in this conflict to bring an end to this war. God of grace. Yeah. Healing God, hear your people as we lift those up in need by your name out loud or in our hearts. We pray for all who are on our prayer list. Visit them with your healing spirit. We pray for the faculty, staff, and students of Kennesaw State University as they continue their mission of education. And we pray for our sister congregation, Mount Zion AME Church. Bless and preserve them. God of grace, hear our prayer. We pray for our presiding Bishop Elizabeth and Bishop Kevin. Bless them with your loving presence and spirit of wisdom as they lead our church. God of grace, hear our prayer. We give thanks for all the saints who now rest from their labors. Help us, like them, to bear much fruit and to be your faithful disciples. At the last, bring us to that heavenly banquet where all will feast together at your table. God of grace, hear our prayer. 
Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us share that peace among ourselves. Peace be with you. Peace be with you, Martha. Peace be with you, Kay. Peace be with you, Bertie. Peace be with you. <laughs> Peace be with you. Peace be with you, Chris. Peace be with you, Rosemary. <laughs> Rose should be here next week. Yeah. Peace be with you. With any luck. <laughs> Peace be with you, Jinx. Peace be with you, Julie. Peace be with you. Peace be with you, Lisa. Lisa. Peace be with you. Peace be with you, Helen. Peace be with you. I'll give you a hug. I still love you. <laughs> Peace be with you, Keith. Peace be with you, John. Peace be with you, Helen. Peace be with you, Jackie. Peace be with you, Mark. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Peace be with you, Lucy. Peace be with you, Pepper. At some place. Peace be with you, Joy. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Peace be with you, Pastor.
Risen one, you call us to believe and bear fruit. May the gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. Form us to be your witnesses in the world through Jesus Christ, our true vine. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter, and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Oh, holy, holy Lord, God of power, God of might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna, in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name, in the name of the Lord, Hosanna. Holy God, mighty Lord, gracious Father, endless is your mercy and the eternal your reign. You have filled all creation with light and life. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. We praise you for the grace shown to your people in every age, the promise to Israel, the rescue from Egypt, the gift of the promised land, the words of the prophets, and at this end of all the ages, the gift of your Son who proclaimed the good news in word and deed and was obedient to your will, even to giving his life. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is being given up for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is being shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Therefore, O oh God, with this bread and this cup, we remember the life our Lord offered for us. And believing the witness of his resurrection, we await his coming in power to share with us the great and promised feast. Send now, we pray, your Holy Spirit upon this bread and wine that it may be for us the body and blood of your Son, so that we who share in his body and blood may live to the praise of your glory and receive our inheritance with all your saints in light. Join our prayers with those of your servants of every time and every place and unite them with the ceaseless petitions of our great high priest until he comes as victorious Lord of all. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now we're bold to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. 
Behold the Lamb of God who bears away the sin of the world. Thanks be to God. Lamb of God, you take...
Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ keep you and strengthen you in his grace to eternal life. Amen. Amen. Shepherding God, you have prepared a table before us and nourished us with your love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness and share the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Go in peace, rejoice, and be glad. that bright a man. <laughs> hey, take care. Have a good week. <laughs> Thank you so much. Have a great week. You too. I like coffee. <laughs> so glad you came today. Me too. Will you want I will. I will. She's, uh, she's busy at home working on a quilt that she has to finish. The end of school is coming up soon. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good reason not to church, but it's her reason. <laughs> I don't know if it's a good reason. Hey, good luck. Hope that uh, works out. Yeah, I hope so too. I hope so too. That'd be awesome. Man, that would be awesome. But now I can start really putting everything in action and when I can start really focusing on all the stuff that's been holding me up for all these months and stuff like that. So <laughs> I'm hoping so. And plus, this will be a great job because I get to actually get to go back to the help delivering. Yeah. What what company is it? I'm not sure. She didn't really give you know, the staff managers they don't really give you a lot. Ah. They only give you like a little piece or stuff that they know or stuff that they can give you. Also, I know. 
hospitals, and then I think different hospitals, I'm assuming, and it's in the box.